Hey everyone, welcome back. Fred here at Math and Engineering. We are continuing with our midterm preparation for uh, early strengths and materials courses, so kind of just like statics or stress analysis uh, on beams, that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and let's just get right into this question. So we've uh, we've come up with this kind of beam. Uh, it's just pretty crazy. There's got a they've got a bunch of different loads on there. I wouldn't expect anything like this during your test uh, to draw a bending moment diagram or a shear force diagram. That's way too hard. So uh, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to show you kind of how to resolve these forces and take the moment about a point, and then you can cut it and uh, find the force and find the moment at some point. So let's go ahead and start like we always do with the reactions. So we, uh, we're going to draw a nice big diagram for this one. So we have uh, at point A, we have a pin. So we're going to go ahead and write the reactions here. We have AX and AY, right? So we have this triangular force here. Okay, so this triangular force, we're going to resolve it as, uh, you know, just a tri however you'd find the area of a triangle, right? So we have base times height, so 3 meter base times 200 uh, meter height. We're going to say this is kilonewton. Okay, sorry about that. So we have kilonewton, and we have uh, so we have 600 divided by two. Okay, so that is going to give us a 300 kilonewton force. Okay, and as we know, the uh, resolved force acts in the center of gravity of the shape. So the center of gravity of the triangle is uh, two over three times the distance from the small end, or one over three from the tall end. Okay. So this is going to be one meter, and this is going to be two meters, right? So this is two meter section here, okay? And then this is a one meter section, and I'll just draw an imaginary line here. So we also have a force acting another meter from this point, okay? That is acting downwards. That's given to us as 40 kilonewton meters, sorry, 40 kilonewtons, right? And that is also one meter. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just kind of resolving each force as we go from left to right. And as we go, I'm writing all the distances in between the individual points. Okay, that's important to stay nice and organized. All right. And now we have one more meter over to point C, right? And uh, at point C, we have a, I'm just going to draw another imaginary line here. Okay, we have a 100 kilonewton force over a 2 meter distance. Okay, so that's going to be 200 kilonewton acting down. That's one meter and one meter. Perfect. And now we have point B. Okay, so at point B, we're going to have a reaction. Uh, we'll call that BY. And we'll just extend this beam a little further. And then we have three meters with nothing there except the free moment at the end. And we have that as 20 kilonewton meter. Okay, cool. So we've uh, we've drawn our free body diagram, and we have everything we need to find the reactions, right? So let's take the moment about point A, and uh, the moment about point A. Okay, so we have a 300 kilonewton force that's acting negative, and it's two meters. Okay, we have a force that's acting downwards again, so that's going to be negative, and that's four meters. So a 40 kilonewton force acting four meters from point A. We have a 200 kilonewton force that's also acting down, right? And that, how far is that? Well, that's two, three, four, five, six meters. We have BY, that's acting in the opposite direction. So that's the knees, so it's positive, counterclockwise, BY, and that is going to be two, three, four, five, six, seven meters. Okay, and finally, we have a free moment here of 20 in the positive direction. Cool, so I'll, you know, as we've done before, all we need to do is go ahead and solve for BY. Okay, so we are going to have everything and this is gonna switch signs. BY, we can keep that the same. So we have 1200 plus 160 plus 600 minus 20 divided by seven. That's going to give us 277.14 kilonewton and the uh, upward direction here. Cool, and let's go ahead and solve for uh, a y. So let's we'll go ahead and take the forces in the y direction. We'll say up is positive. So we, what do we have here? We have b y. So we have 277.14 minus 200 minus 40 minus 300 plus a y is equal to zero. Okay. If we go ahead and calculate that, we have 300 plus 40 plus 200 minus 277.14. That's going to give us 262. 
0.86. Cool. Pretty easy, right? All right. So now that we've found the reactions, let's go ahead and let's uh, try and figure out what the question's asking us. And it's asking us to find the shear force and moment at point C. Okay, so whenever we want the exact numbers of the shear force and the moment at a point, the internal forces, okay, we need to cut the beam at that point. So let's go ahead and cut the beam at C. Okay, so we'll go and we'll cut it from the left. So that's the beam. We've gone ahead and, and I'm just going to draw it in pink where we cut it. Okay, so we cut it here. Okay, so we cut it at uh, point C here. This is point C. This is point A. All right, and let's go ahead and draw our sign convention for our cuts. Our internal forces are acting in these directions here. Okay, and well, what do we have here? Okay, so we just need to go ahead and translate these forces that we had up to point C. So uh, up to point C, we had the triangular force here, right? That was acting 300 kilonewton down, okay? We had the uh, force at A, the reaction, right? That is acting upwards at 262.86. This was two meters, if we recall. Okay, this was one meter here. We're going, only going up to point C, right? So we have this 40 kilonewton force here, right? Before C, and that acts in the center here. So this is one meter, this is 40 kilonewton. And this is also one meter to that force. Perfect. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and let's solve for the shear and the moment at that point. So all we need to do is uh, from this point here, we just need to evaluate the shear and that's just not dependent on distance. So we can say the forces in the y direction are equal to, we have our negative shear as always. We have our negative 40, which is acting downwards. We have our negative 300 and we have our positive 262.86. It's equal to zero. V should be equal to Okay, we should have negative 77.14. So that is the shear at that point. Great. And now let's go ahead and find the moment at point C. Okay, so the moment at point C is equal to, we have this free moment M, we have a positive 40 kilonewton force, that's gonna create a positive moment. We have a 300 kilonewton force that is acting positive direction, three meters, okay, from that point, and we have the 286, that's gonna be negative, right, because it's going in the opposite direction, 262.86 times five, right, this distance, okay, that is going to be equal to zero, and if we go ahead and solve for M here, we should get, uh, if we just throw that in our calculator here, M is going to go to the other side, right? So all of these signs are going to change, so they'll be opposite. Perfect. So we've uh, we've solved for the shear, we've solved for the moment at point C, and that's it. That's what the question asked us for. Hopefully this helped, and you know, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.